Economics in practice demand and supply. Today we are going to look for the spread chocolate. What is your favorite spread chocolate? Nutella for sure. So we're not going to talk about the Nutella and preferences, but we are looking for where is the equilibrium in this market? If there is equilibrium or there is no equilibrium. This is what we're going to figure out within this video. So before we start digging deeper in the demand and supply, we are going to look for the Nutella ingredient. Why? because it is one of the most important factors that affect the supply function, cost of production. So we're going to start with the most important one, which is cocoa. And there is a lot of rumors that we are going to run out of cocoa and there will no be no chocolate. And this is what's said by Bloomberg in 2020. The second component is the hazelnuts, which is represent more than 25% of this product ingredient. In addition to milk, vanilla, palm, sugar, and other things, soy and vanilla, all these things are aggregated together to put in the nutrition for Nutella ingredient breakfast meat. So in, since 1964, Fredo Rocher in Italy explored our spread chocolate. And now then till 2014, they were celebrating the 50 years of full story of success. And there is another fact that we need to take in, in consideration that one jar of Nutella is sold every 2.5 seconds. One person is born every eight seconds. Wow, so Nutella is born faster and faster than population. The amount of Nutella produced in one year weighed the same amount of the Empire State Building, giving them equal weight. So let's go for the interesting part, the vendor supply for chocolate spread. So we have the data for 2010 till 2020 and the prices in kilogram US dollars and the unit produced in millions and units sold in millions as well kilogram. So we are going to investigate for the demand and supply together and are, we're going to start by gathering the data that you see it there. And then we are going to look for the observation. And within this observation, we are looking for the demand relation. So what would be the demand relation here? We pick the data for the prices and the units sold during the period 2020 till 20, 1020 till 2020. And then select the, the scatter diagram and the draw the demand relation as you see here. So you will find here that this is the unit sold and this is the demand, which is violating the inverse relation for the demand curve. So you will find whenever their prices increases, people are still demanding and they are buying the product and this is a positive relation violating the law of demand because there is other factors. Let's go for the supply. To select the supply, we go, we're going to add, add data, and then we go for the series, write the name supply, and then you pick the sub series value for the x-axis, the unit produced, and then you go for selecting the y-axis, the prices here, and then you will find that the supply curve is identically higher and higher than the demand curve. And if you want to look for the trend relation, we can do a right click for the supply curve, which is higher than the demand and there is no equilibrium here. Right click, add data, and then you look for the trend relation. When we look for the trend relation, you are going to display the equation on the chart and you will find the equation, it is clear in front of you, which represent a positive relation for both of them, the demand and the supply and then you have the demand relation. If we look for the supply curve and the facts about the chocolate, you will find that the shortage of the hazelnuts and the cocoa, which are the main driving factor that affect the supply relation. And the production of Nutella uses more than 25% of the world hazelnut crop, and this is reflect negatively on the production during 2015 till 2017 until they recover. And the global shortage of the hazardness in addition to the cocoa due to the climate change and the weather changes, this is reflect negatively that the production here has been declining. And this is reflect on the increasing the prices because the supply here has been decreasing. And then it's recovered later and then it adjusts by adding other ingredients and adjusting to the products. So you will see here that there is a positive relation for the supply, but there is a backward and this backward because of the shortage and the climate change. After we go for the supply, we go for the demand, we look for the chocolate and what are the driving factors. Surprisingly, we'll find that the demand relation, it is an upward sloping, similarly identically to the supply relation. But in addition to the income impact and the exchange rate that was the main driving factors in other countries, but in the United States, there are two main factors, which is the environmentally awareness and the misleading advertisement. And this led to the upward sloping 
And as well, it's reflect on the demand here. And this is reflect negatively. And this is not a violation because when there is an increase in prices, the unit demanded has been declining due to the increase in prices. So after we look for the demand and supply, we are going to look for the trend relation. And you will see when we gather both of them, there is no equilibrium both of between, of between any of these two curves. There is no intersection and usually the supply is higher than the demand. And this is give us the upward sloping. So let's come to the interesting part, which is the elasticity application. So to calculate the price elasticity of demand, we have here the equation, percent of the change of quantity demanded with respect to the percent of the change in price. So to find this, we need to find the differences over the average to got the percentage change of the unit sold. And then we go for the percentage change of the prices by taking the differences with respect to the average, as you see here. So to calculate the price elasticity, we're going to start by the observation. We start by taking the difference between the unit sold, the Q2 minus Q1, 2011, 2010. And then the average between Q2 and Q1 until you got to the average between these two observations of the unit sold between selecting the two observations, 210 and 211. Then divide the difference over the average, divide the difference over the average, you're giving you the percent of the change here. And if you multiply it, you will see that it is increased by 3.6%. We will do the same for the prices and you will find that it is the difference between the prices and the average of the prices P2 minus P1, P2 plus P1 over two. And then we got the average for the same observation. And then we can find the percentage of change price. How much the prices have changed? So by taking the difference with respect to the average, you will find that the percentage of change in the prices is almost 4.2%. And then we can find the elasticity of demand by taking the percentage of change of units divided the percentage of change of the prices and see how the price is affecting the unit demanded. And then here, we are going to drag the rest of the observation by selecting this data to get all the rest of the observation. So unit sold divided unit, uh, percentage change of unit sold divided percentage change of prices, you will have here the elasticity of demand. And then we go drag and then they select the other observation to create the answers of the formula of the elasticity of demand. Very interesting that you will see some observation are elastic and other inelastic. And this is what we're going to explain it in the second slide. But after we calculate the elasticity of demand, it has come to my mind to look for the elasticity of supply. So elasticity of supply, it will look for the percentage of change of unit produced with respect to the percentage of change of the same prices in the market. So we're going to do the same steps, the differences of the unit produced, taking in consideration the average of the same unit produced of the same interval. And then you'll take the average between Q2 and Q1, which is 2011 and 2010. If you got the averages and the differences, then this is the last step that you can find the percentage change of unit produced, which is the difference divided that the average, which is 4.3% percentage change of unit produced. Do the same for the prices, P2 minus P1, and then do the averages of the prices to get percentage change of prices. So differences over the average give us the percentage change. But this is not the elasticity. This is not the elasticity. The elasticity is the percentage change of unit produced with respect to the percentage change of the prices here. And then we find the elasticity. We select the cells and do a drag, and then you will have the elasticity of supply. And let's explain the meaning of all these variables and the meaning of these reactions between the percentage of change of unit produced and the percentage of change of price. So here in assistive supply in practice, you will see here that the prices usually range between 2% increases and the unit produced change around 6%. But here with the increase in prices this much that the unit produced responding higher, and this is give us the meaning of elastic, that the reaction is higher. And the relation usually is a positive, but we ignore the sign. And elasticity means that we have another alternatives here. 
If we go for 2016, the, day, the year that we explained reasons of the high percentage change with 22% increase in prices, this reflects negatively on the unit produced to give us an inelastic product. Why? Because it is due to the increase in the prices, the high increase in percentage change of prices, it is reflected negatively. And this is make a violation. It is not increasing in the same way, but the reaction was weak here and does not change that much. It is the same way after 2011 to 2019, and you will find that the products return to its original situation to become elastic. In 2020, the percentage of change, they are all the same, which means that there are other factors that we're going to practice during the COVID 2020. Let's go for the statistic demand in practice. So there's the same prices. It range between 1.5 and 2% increase in prices. And the unit bought here, it is increasing as well. But let's say again, the increase in prices do not reflect negatively, but it reflect positively. People behave in a different way and they demanded the product more because of the changing of the behavior. But here the formula gives us that this product is elastic, which means that they have another alternatives and substitute. If there is an increase, this does not decrease it that much, but it increases with the same direction, reflecting the highly demanded product and the people become addicted to this one. And they are there is other branding and advertisement that change the behavior. It is not the prices here, as you see. If you go for 2016, the prices increases and the unit dropped, and this is the normal demand relation, prices increases and the reaction was that much, 5.9%. But it is not the increase in prices by 20% overcome this because this is what reflect later on the total revenue. If you go for 2017 to 2019, the percent of the change increased by 2% as well, and the unit demanded was higher than the increase in prices, and this is the meaning of elastic. And this is violating the law of demand and supply because advertisement, environmental awareness, other factors other than the prices are the main driving factors. In 2020, you will see here as well, it has become retain, returning back to the inelastic product because other products become more important. So we are going to see here that the products of Nutella is become a highly demanded one, and it is not responding to the prices as we usually see. Spread chocolate is totally controlled by Ferrero Rocher in Italy, and there are other driving factors that we explore today, today with each other. And the producer must find the fundamental solution to the problem of factors affecting the supply and the inputs cost. In addition, Nutella become a fundamental product, and it is essential for the people who are to want to take their breakfast and enjoy their meal. I wish this video fulfill your expectations and see you in once more economics in practice. Thank you for watching.